There aren't many games that predate this reviewer, but Pong, seen as many as the very genesis of the home video game, is certainly one that does. Sucker Punch VR aims to bring this most ancient of concepts into the VR era by adding a fitness element, power-ups, and a central concept that feels like a hyperkinetic multi-ball mode. Three-dimensional takes on Pong have been around almost as long as the original iterations themselves. I was a big fan of Robo Squash on the Atari Lynx back in the early 90s, but similar games such as Chris Newcomb's Room 10 appeared as early as 1986 on the ZX Spectrum, a system whose 3D was rudimentary to say the least. So, can Sucker Punch VR elevate the humble bat and ball game to a thing of VR greatness? There's only one way to find out. Sucker Punch VR's modern evolution of this idea begins by having you defend and indeed attack a 10 by 10 grid. Each square on the grid represents a lane. The player's job is to protect their grid from cubes that travel towards them along these lanes by punching them back towards their opponent using special gloves. Matches are usually played to 200 points, with each basic block that beats your defence scoring 5 against you. Key to the tactical side of the game, the longer a block remains in play, the more it becomes worth, with the colour changing to represent the increased value. Power-ups, available for purchase from the in-game shop, add another level of variety to the play. Thankfully, there are no microtransactions here. In-game currency is earned exclusively from winning matches. Losing a competitive game will also cost you whichever power-up you have equipped. If you don't want to risk losing your equipped power-up, you can purchase insurance for a small percentage of your currency. It's a nice touch that aims to add an element of risk versus reward to proceedings. The aesthetic of Sucker Punch VR is somewhere between the gaudy colours and soft edges of Gang Beasts and the battered techno future of Portal. Many of the environments are brightly coloured and the object cubes cycle through loud rainbow hues. Alongside this, opponents are represented as hovering droids and many of the power-up gloves have an electro-mechanical style. It's an odd mix, but it just about comes off. The audio is less successful. The background tunes are basic electronic and offer no real relationship to the gameplay. They almost universally lack any impact and audio cues are either wholly non-existent or too subtle to stand out during gameplay. Even the most basic of events, such as scoring or conceding a point, have effects that are lost in the various other, arguably unimportant, sound effects that accompany a match. This lack of feedback is not just a problem with the audio. It's actually the game's main failing and the thing that led me to stop playing. As you reach to punch the cubes, the haptic and oral cues are far too minimal. The aforementioned lack of scoring sound effects makes it impossible to get any feel of how the match is going, forcing you to keep half an eye on the score. Although there's plenty of unused visual real estate above your opponent where it could be seen effortlessly, the score is awkwardly displayed at the side of the play area. A more fundamental issue, however, is how basic the gameplay is. The power of your punch defines the speed of the shot. The power-ups bring the ability to split cubes or have them switch lanes or other variations on those ideas. Some power-ups will project force fields with various effects across the whole play area. But aligned to the lack of impact and feedback, none of these things really feel earned or particularly within the player's control. Wins and losses both appear to occur incidentally. Tactical play never really evolved beyond slowing down the gameplay until your powers are charged and then using them against the highest scoring single cube or group thereof. It's worth noting that I have been entirely unable to find a multiplayer match at the time of this review, so these thoughts are based on the single player experience alone. The meat of this is the league. This is where the power up gamble should elevate the experience, but it provides more frustration than satisfaction. The insurance you pay to secure your gloves in case of a loss is so insignificant that it's rarely not worth taking out, which renders the whole exercise a little bit pointless. Moreover, it's impossible to make any actual estimation of the standard of the opponent before you begin, so knowing when or when not to take the risk is pure guesswork. Training matches are also available to test the effects of any newly purchased power-ups, and there's a daily challenge level for the committed player that should add longevity. Despite the issues I've mentioned, one aspect of Sucker Punch VR really shines. It provides an excellent workout. Surprisingly, the punching action is the least of the exertions demanded. The 10x10 grid is simply impossible to cover without stretching, squatting and moving side to side. 
and this makes playing Sucker Punch VR feel closer in approximation to a reflex light test than a boxing simulator. And I can't help but feel that if the core gameplay were more closely tied to this idea, it would be a more successful and more enjoyable experience. Sucker Punch VR isn't very far away from being a fun experience. Tweaks such as more dynamic music or even allowing the player to stream their own would certainly help. Positioning the scoreboard to where it could be more easily absorbed, upping the audio and haptic feedback for points scored and conceded, and providing some kind of overview of the opponent's track record before a match are all changes that aren't big, but they would have a big impact on the enjoyability of the product. Unfortunately, as it stands, the lack of impact on what is ostensibly a boxing experience is unforgivable. Early fun is quickly replaced by growing frustration as a lack of audio or visual cues lead to losing without ever knowing why and winning without knowing what you did well. There's good intention here and an even better workout, but both are sadly lost to inconsistent delivery. It's a good idea that's somewhat lost in its unpolished execution. Sucker Punch VR is a good workout hiding behind a middling gameplay experience. 5. Featherweight